Okay, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to LICD Lecture 40D. Today we are going to uh, analyze practical integrator numericals, two of them basically. So let us begin. So numerical number one. So we have to determine the output voltage for the integrator circuit shown below. If the input is a sine wave of one volt peak and 2.5 kilohertz frequency. So this is the integrator circuit given to us. RF value is 10K, CF value is 100 nano, R1 value is one kilo ohm and a sine wave of sinusoidal wave of 2.5 kilohertz and one volt peak peak value is given to us. So let us start. So the given data is input is a sine wave of peak value VM, which is one volt peak and frequency is 2.5 kilohertz. So V in is basically VM sine omega T that will be equal to VM sine two pi F into T. So we know that the output of the OPAM integ integrator is given by V out of T will be equal to minus one upon R R1 into CF integral of zero to T V in of DT. And what will be V in of DT? VM sine omega T. VM is one sine uh, two pi F is two phi zero zero T into DT. And R1 value is 10K that is 10 into 10 is to three. And CF value is 10 nanofarad, which will be 10 into 10 is to minus nine. So if you if you take the multiplication of this R1 into CF, you will get 10 is to four. So V out will be given by minus 10 is to four integral of zero to T sine of two pi uh, into two phi zero zero t into dt and integral of sine will be cosine right but with a constant integration will be out so v out will be given by uh, minus one upon uh, minus 10 is to 4 divided by two pi into two phi zero zero into minus of cos two pi two phi zero zero t okay so what will be the value of uh, v out uh, v out will be given by 0 0.6 three six six cos of two pi f t okay so that means output is a cosine wave with a peak amplitude of 0 0.6366 now let us observe this in the lt spy simulation i've already built up the circuit ready for y'all so rf was 100k r1 was 10k and cf value was around 10 nano right let us cross check this no rf was 10k and r1 was 1k so I have to change it accordingly over here. This will be 10K and uh, this will be around 1K. Fine. Now let us uh, analyze this uh, for a sine wave, whether we are getting a cosine wave or no. Okay. So this is my sinusoidal input of one volt peak and this is my output. Okay. Uh, wait a second. I think there is some mistake over here. Frequency is 2.5 kilohertz. Okay. VM magnitude is this. Let us see what's the capacitor value. The capacitor value is 100 nanofarad. Yeah. Okay. So capacitor value is 100 nanofarad. So this, if we simulate this again, yeah. So we are getting a sinusoidal uh, uh, cosine wave output for a sine wave input. Let's check the magnitude of it. So the positive magnitude is around, uh, if I expand it clearly, let me check it now. It's around uh, 632 millivolt. Okay, that is around 0 0.632. Okay, so for a sinusoidal wave, as an input to a practical integrator, we are getting a cosine wave output. Now let us analyze that in the PDF. Okay, so here it is. Let me put it into full screen mode. Okay, so here, here it is what we are getting. Uh, for a sinusoidal wave, this is a sine wave and output will be a cosine wave of amplitude 0 0.6366. Okay. And whereas the time period, total time period will be 0.4 millisecond indicating it's a 2.5 kilohertz signal. Okay. So these are the input output waveforms for a practical integrator with a sine wave input. Now, next let us analyze with a square wave input. So let us see numerical number two. So numerical number two is determine the output voltage for the integrator circuit shown below 
if the input is a square wave of 1 volt peak and 2.5 kilohertz frequency so if it is a 2.5 kilohertz frequency the total time period will be 0.4 millisecond for a square wave has a 50% duty cycle so on time will be 2.2 millisecond off time will be 0.2 millisecond fine and the peak to peak amplitude over here is uh, 2 volts peak to peak which is 1 volt peak and the integrator circuit the practical integrator circuit is given with rf as 10k value r1 is 1k and cf is 100 nanofarad okay now let us analyze this so given as the input square wave so it can be observed that the, uh, from the input that from 0 to 0.2 the input is at constant 1 volt and from 0.2 millisecond to 0.4 millisecond the input is at minus 1 volt uh, from 0 to 0.2 input is at plus 1 and from 0.2 to 0.4 millisecond input is at minus 1 volt here it is so if you observe this carefully let me expand it yeah from 0 to 0.2 millisecond the input is constant at 1 volt and from uh, 0.2 to 0.4 millisecond the input is constant at minus 1 volt so with this information let us begin our analysis for the okay so let us calculate the output v out from 0 t equal to 0 to 0.1 millisecond basically not uh, till 0.1 millisecond so let us assume that the output over here is 1 volt initially at t equal to 0 it's 1 volt so what's the uh, formula for the integrator circuit v out of t will be minus 1 upon r1 into cf integral of uh, t going from 0 to 0.1 millisecond and the output was 1 right into 1 into dt plus v out at t equal to 0 so over here r1 and cf value if you substitute that will be 10 is to 4 and integral of 1 uh, dt will be t with t equal to 0 to 0.1 millisecond and v out at t equal to 0 is 1 volt so if you multiply and solve this in a calculator you will get v out at t equal to 0 0.1 millisecond as 0 volt okay so uh, v out will be 0 volt at t equal to 0 0.1 millisecond now let's calculate the v out from 0 0.1 to 2.2 millisecond so from 0 0.1 millisecond to 0 0.2 millisecond the output is still at uh, 1 volt okay uh, sorry the input is still at 1 volt okay let us calculate now and uh, also we have to see that now v out at t equal to 0 0.1 millisecond is at 0 volt okay so this is the updated value so v out of t will be minus 1 upon r1 into cf integral of uh, t going from 0 0.1 millisecond to 0 0.2 millisecond into 1 dt because input is still 1 volt plus v out of at t equal to 0 0.1 millisecond now if you work it out over here uh, this product is 10 is to 4 and this t will be 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 millisecond that will be 0 0.1 millisecond only plus 0 because v out at uh, 0 0.1 millisecond is 0 over here we have evaluated before so this number will be uh, this is around 10 is to 4 into uh, 10 is to minus 4 that will be 1 so the output at t equal to 0 0.2 will be uh, minus 1 volt at t equal to 0 0.2 millisecond that means from 0 to 0 0.2 millisecond v out will be a negative going ram from plus 1 to minus 1 okay so we can concentrate that we can check that out later now let's calculate the output from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 millisecond so right now my output is at minus 1 okay as you can see at t equal to 0 0.2 millisecond the output is at minus 1 so that will serve as the initial condition over here so v out will be given by v out of t will be minus 1 upon r1 into cf integral of 0 0.2 millisecond to 0 0.4 millisecond now the input is minus 1 volt right into dt plus v out at t equal to 0 0.2 and t equal to 0 0.2 is minus 1 volt and here again you will get the same number uh, your t will be going from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 millisecond that will be 0 0.2 millisecond so here we'll get uh, plus 2 this number that is for product of 10 is to 4 into 0.2 into 10 is to minus 3 that will be plus 2 minus 1 so at v out equal to uh, 0 0.2 millisecond uh, my output will be 1 volt okay no actually this is at uh, 0 0.4 millisecond okay 0 0.4 actually this is 
v out is from 0.2 to 0.4 millisecond so this number will be 0.2 to 0.4 millisecond not at uh, 0.2 millisecond okay so this is a mistake over here i have written over here so v out will be going from 0.2 to uh, 0.4 millisecond so that is at 0.4 millisecond the output is at 1 volt so again v out will be a positive going ram from 0.1 uh from minus 1 to sorry not 0.1 from minus 1 to plus 1 volt so in this way the integration action will complete so let us check now that so for whenever v in was uh, 1 volt right at t equal to 0 my output is at uh, you know my this is my triangular wave output basically so at z at t equal to 1 millisecond basically my output was 0 and at t equal to Two millisecond, my output was minus one, and we have observed that. And when t was equal to four millisecond, my output was again one volt. So this is will be a positive going rank. This will be a negative going rank ramp signal. So basically, for a square wave, we get a triangular wave at the output. So these are my input output waveforms for a practical integrator circuit with a square wave input. Okay. And why we are getting uh, for a for a constant DC value, positive DC value? Why are we are getting a negative going ramp? because of the negative sign v out is equal to minus right so that's why we are getting this so that means integrator will convert a input square wave into a output triangular wave okay and the integration action will continue for the next coming cycles for all the cycles which are preceding which are uh, coming after that now let us check this in the lt spies so for lt spies we have to make this as 10 we have to make this capacitor as 100 nano and this will be around 1k now let us print this out over here this is my input and this is my output so as you can see a square wave it's uh, getting converted into a triangular wave uh, for op amp as a practical integrator okay there is a slight delay let's just slightly the output waveform is shifted down that's okay uh that's because of the initial uh, you know the the voltage across the capacitor might be present so that's why there is a small error over here doesn't matter but eventually the circuit is uh, converting your square wave into a triangular wave fine i think uh, yeah so i think we have covered both the numericals uh, wherein we see one numerical we have applied a square wave and other numerical we have applied input as a sine wave in both the cases the integrator was working fine and it converted a sine wave into a cosine wave and it converted a square wave into a triangular wave okay so i think that's it for today's lecture next time we'll start with a uh, ideal differentiator circuit so until then have a good day and thank you